Welcome, Solara here. I hope you guys are doing well. It's good to, to see you again. Um, I've been staying away from doing uh, collective readings for the past couple of days because the energy has been um, just a little bit weird. <laughs> so I decided to take a bit of a break, but I'm back tonight. I'm really just kind of curious about what is going on. Um, because like I said, the energies have been a little bit confusing. So we'll get into, I have a few few ideas of, of what is, is circulating and percolating, but um, we'll get into it a little bit more. Um, before I do that, I want to welcome all of you. Um, thank you to those of you who are returning, um, whether you've been here from when I began the channel almost a year ago, or you've joined recently or somewhere along the way. I thank you for your support and I thank you for your presence. Um, if this is your very first time here, um, I welcome you to stay and see if there are any messages or if you're vibing with my energy. Um, and I invite you to do the YouTube thing, to subscribe if, um, if you like what it is I have to say and share. And uh, to like, to share, and to comment, hit the notification bell if you want to know when I post and all that jazz. Um, I want to thank you for all your likes, your shares, your comments, your donations, um, booking me for services. I really do appreciate all the ways that you guys um, sew in to me and help me to appreciate in value um, as I continue to walk in um, my purpose and serve the collective in the best way that I know how. Okay, so as I am, <laughs> am speaking, I'm, I'm looking out my window because there's a, a storm going on and um, there was just uh, lightning just now and um, there was a little bit of thunder as I was setting up for this and it's very interesting because all day today, there's been this real heavy energy. Um, you know when it's real, like a humid energy, but um, it, it felt heavier than just humidity. And when I was out and about this evening, it was um, it was not only humidity, but it was expressing itself with a fog. There was a literal fog that was falling. Um, and I know that, you know, like London, you, you probably heard about London fog, but it's not actually as common as, as what you hear about it, you know, commercially in entertainment. And the funny thing is that London fog, mostly, most of the time when I've experienced it, it's during cold weather. So it's really, it was really interesting and intriguing as I was walking around today to see the fog and to feel the, the level of humidity in the air. So, um... Then I started to receive messages and I started to hear songs and, you know, um, getting this feeling that there's a, you know, that we're in a very emotionally dense period, which of course led me to figure out, you know, planetarily what's happening. And sure enough, the moon is moving into Scorpio in about, you know, a little bit less than six hours. So I was just like, okay, well, that makes sense. But what has that got to do? With, with, you know, everything. What, what message is it that you have for us? And I do feel like, um, you know, um, energy moves in cycles, right? So um, there are times when energy gets very tight and there are times when it loosens. There are times when it gets very tight and there's times when it loosens. And oftentimes when an energy is getting very tight, it's because it's on the brink of some kind of, of change. Something wants to be introduced into the cycle that's a little bit different. And in order for that to happen, there must be some kind of tension that instigates the ability for the energy to shift and I feel like that's where we are right now collectively okay and um, as I was and I say that also because of the emotionally dense energy I've been feeling and that is that um, you know everything is birthed through our emotions or birthed through water all things come forth by way of our emotional energy, emotion, energy in motion. Your thoughts can't come into physical reality until emotions are applied and then maybe um, some kind of physical action to bring it forward too, right? So that made me think something is on the brink once again of being born. Now, what that is in your in, in all of our lives on an individual level is going to be commensurate to our own personal experiences and what is going on. But we have been going through grand shifts. These, uh, this retrograde season um, has been opening up the opportunity for um, for us to timeline surf in a way that, you know, 
while it's confusing, the confusion is what brings forth the options. Um, it's like that Seven of Cups, Scorpio energy, the Seven of Cups, the, the very confusion that um, the person faces when looking at the Seven Cups is because they have so many options. And that's kind of what we're in right now is as these timelines continue to rapidly fall and collapse, especially because the foundation upon which these timelines were built no longer exists, we have the ability to surf and jump in a way that is quite Cool, except because of all of the collapse, it's also confusing and at times stressful. So um, I feel like what we're, what's going on right now is kind of a reflection of, of the chaos that's coming forth because of the timeline jumping and the ability to birth new realities so rapidly, if that makes sense. Okay, so... Um, the reason I also want to bring up the emotional heaviness is because um, I feel like uh, it's breeding this energy of discouragement on an individual level and also collectively. There's this energy of discouragement, but it's also it's almost like an energy of discouragement that um, many people can't quite put their fingers on because things may not be going terribly. They may not be going exactly the way you want them to go, but they're not going terribly. But it's almost like this foreboding feeling more than anything that's connecting to the discouragement. And the thing about it is that I think the foreboding feeling that some of you might be having has less to do with something terrible about to happen and more to do with this energy getting ready to shift. So, um, you know, I'm going to bring it back to what this year is about, 2023, number seven year. It is the year of the chariot, but it's also the year of the tower. And again, in order for the chariot to move forward on its journey, the tower, the towers that have blocked the chariot's path must come down and then the rubble from that demolition process must also be removed in order for you to move forward too. So um, it's just very interesting that this storm energy is happening because it's the perfect um, expression of what it is that I was feeling in the collective energetically and that is that the storm must come in order for the energy to shift, right? But the storm can feel scary, it can feel uncertain, but it's necessary. It's what clears the path for us to move forward. And the storm at the end of the day is always going to be about your perspective of what storm energy is, you know? So when you look at a storm from like a, a scientific standpoint, what's really cool about it is that it actually um, when the lightning hits the earth, it actually helps to make the earth more fertile because it helps to increase the, the nitrogen in the soil, which um, is actually a natural fertilizer. A lot of the fertilizers that um, are used in farming are nitrogen based and lightning actually makes the soil more fertile. So I always like to... Um, I might be, you might think I'm weird for saying this, I don't give a fuck, but um, I always like to say to people that, like, I feel like when I, I love storms, like, and I feel like when I'm in the middle of a storm, I'm like, um, like experiencing, I'm like eavesdropping on like this uh, really like hot and heavy, like, um, you know, like a uh, session of the, the divine father and the divine mother making love like I, I'm, I'm, I'm here and I'm part of the like I'm here and I'm part I like I'm experiencing the energy this like the the passion and the and the sexual energy and all of that I feel very um connected in that way to the storm so I love I love the storm so um that's what I'm feeling right now and I I'm even getting the sense that this is like a theme for the week ahead and I don't normally like to, you know, um, make blanket statements like that, but I'm, I am really sensing it right now that uh, there's something about a return of the energy, or not a return of the energy, but maybe almost like, um, like some kind of completion of energy that um, 
it wasn't born on the full moon in Pisces, but it's, it was almost like um, something was set in motion by the full moon in Pisces, possibly to close something out for someone or for or on a collective level even. Um, well, yes, on a collective level. And I feel like um, this week, and even as we get closer to the full moon in Aries, something is um, like sublimating that. And uh, the full moon in Pisces was at the seven degree mark, it was seven, seven energy. So it therefore was the eight of cups energy. So it was all about the walking away. And Pisces um, energy, uh, even the eight, nine and 10 of cups, which is the Pisces energy in the minor arcana, it is all about grand wrapping ups. It is the 12th house energy. It is the end of karmic cycles. It is uh, the return to innocence um, that is possible when we have cleared um, our way of karmic living and we have risen into dharmic living and we've connected with who we are and therefore um, the miraculous in our multidimensional infinite truth. It's afforded to us through the Piscean energy and um, I feel like there's something closing out this week and I keep on getting this energy of the tower especially with the storm going on and there we go the lightning again and I'm thinking about uh, you know, the lightning when it strikes the tower card, um, in the tower card when it strikes the tower and it splits the tower. And the thing about the tower energy, it's connected again to Scorpio and we're kicking off the week with the moon moving into Scorpio. Um, the thing about the tower energy is that it gets a bit of a bad rep. <laughs> a lot of the time it's the card, ooh, as I say that, it's like, ooh, lightning, lightning, lightning. Amazing. Oh, can you hear the thunder? It's the sky was so lit up just now. Anyway, um, the tower gets a bit of a bad rep, right? It's a card that nobody wants to get, right? But the tower actually is more than just like destruction and things happening that we don't like. The tower can also mean sudden enlightenment, for one thing. The tower can also mean amazing sex. You know, um, the tower doesn't only have to have like really bad, um, you know, connotations. And the tower is also negative, uh, negative. The tower is necessary, wrong N word, necessary for the rebuild. It's necessary for the rebirth. Yes, it's necessary for the judgment energy to come, which is, of course, rebirth, but it's also um the balancing, the true balancing of the scales that actually occurs um, materially, okay? So Libra sets that balancing in motion and the Scorpionic energy helps to, 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 to birth it. The Scorpio energy is about birthing too, um, especially that third deacon, which is again, seven of cups. But um, I don't wanna to go too far into that right now. I wanna talk a little bit about some of the themes that have been coming up. And for some reason yesterday, my guides kept on speaking to me about learned helplessness, okay? And so um, I, you know, before I began to record this, I, I did a little bit of reading up about it, like I knew what it meant. On a, uh, you know, from the standpoint of having lived through um, my fair share of emotional, mental, and and physical abuse, I already kind of knew about it. But um, I was led to read up a little bit more. Um, and they were also speaking about someone trying to rewrite history right now, and um, and doing that by way of emotional emotional gaslighting and manipulation and when I asked them what what they meant about emotional gaslighting because gaslighting is normally something that beings do to play with your mind but they tend to do it by using their words so words are connected to mental energy but they said oh no it's emotional gaslighting and it's to do with the um is to do with the rewriting history. And that is that um, for some of you, you are on the cusp of breaking out of a situation that you weren't supposed to break out of. You weren't supposed to break out of the mental and the emotional prison that kept you um, hostage, that kept you um, 
believing na false narratives about yourself where you were powerless, where you needed somebody or you needed certain beings, you'd never make it alone. All of these stories that abusers like to tell you in order to keep you back. Um, abusers will tell you a whole bunch of things in order to psychologically mess with you and psych you out and, and make you feel as if you can't do something. And we'll do it in a myriad of ways. Sometimes, um, you know, financial abuse is not only, um, you know, controlling someone's money, but even uh, controlling the energy around their ability to work. That's a big one, you know, the coercion that comes in when someone tries to constantly get in the way of your ambitions, whether it's by, you know, um, emotionally um, abusing you and tearing you down so you think that you are unable to do something or to go forward um, in the workplace, or whether it is, you know, sabotaging you by making you late to work. There's a whole bunch of ways that abusers will work different levels in order to sabotage your ability to find independence on every plane, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically. And of course, your finances are connected to the physical. So I'm saying all of this because this this is some kind of deeply layered, um, um, uh, this is some kind of narrative, 0033 on my clock, this is some kind of narrative that um, was formed through deep layers of programming of an abusive nature where um, you know, you or the person you're thinking about was programmed out of their ability to rise and to, to do what it is that they need to do in order to thrive on any level, you know, um, by constantly being um, programmed to think that they were incapable. You know, another thing that an abuser will do, especially in intimate partner violence, is they will consistently tear you down and make you feel as if um, you're not beautiful, you're not sexy, you're not smart, you're a burden, and that nobody else will want to put up with you. Right, so they'll make it seem as if no other man or woman is going to ever want you. Like the fact that they put up with you makes them a fucking saint, which of course is again programming, and it it, it is a form of learned helplessness because learned helplessness is this um, state that many who've been abused will fall into when they've been stripped of their power and their confidence, and therefore their belief that they can make a better life for themselves. And so somebody has overcome this um, programming and it was deep and it was layered and you weren't supposed to. And whoever it was that had programmed you into the state of learned helplessness, whether it was an individual or whether it was a group, um, they are now trying to rewrite history by, um, and they're doing it through emotional gaslighting. So an example of this is, um, you know, if you are still in contact with these beings in any way, um, when you come around them, they will do their best to only speak about how amazing, the amazing things they've done for you or the amazing experiences. And they'll go to uh, great lengths to really keep the focus on that. And it's almost like they want to, um, they want to cause you to question your own experience of the full picture. Because here's the thing about abuse, there are good times too. Of course there are good times when you are in, you know, in a family, if you're dealing with family abuse, um, you know, with a sibling, if you're dealing with sibling abuse, with a partner, if you're dealing with intimate partner violence, even in the workplace, there are um, good experiences you have in the midst of all of that, right? But the good experiences do not outweigh the shit. And there's something here about someone trying to make the good experiences like almost make you forget about the shit without them taking any accountability or responsibility for what it is they've done. And not only is it responsibility for what it is that they've done, but some of these beings are still actively trying to work against you while pretending that they're not. So they're still trying to rewrite history in your, um, in your face 
and behind your back, they're still doing things to try and sabotage you and pull you back into that place of learned helplessness. There's a lot of very, you know, like in, 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 in reading and dealing with energy, there's always mess. There's always shit going on, right? But there's something about uh, the retrograde energies right now. Um, and for the past week or so, maybe from, um, maybe even longer than the past week, like from the full moon in Pisces, there's been this very uh, covert, covert energies that are at play right now. Um, a lot of coercion that's happening and coercion that's happening right now, um, but happening in pretty packages. You know what I mean? And it's designed, like I said, to emotionally gaslight you, to, to pull you into um, an emotional... Um, an emotional way of feeling um, that connects you with the good things and almost makes you forget about the bad. Okay, but that is a form of manipulation and gaslighting. And not for nothing, it is something that abusers do. Because if you look at um, how you know, they break down the cycles of abuse. This is what happens. Um, there is an outburst. Then there is the trying to uh, to calm down the outburst by being really, really nice um, to win the, the victim's trust back, you know, until they, they go ahead and they do it again, um, that honeymoon period. And it's almost like a honeymoon period, but it's, it's, it's different. It's like... Um, it's a little bit skewed. I don't know what's happening, but like right now, the rain is like coming down. It's like something's about to come down. Um, it's like um, something's about to come down. Um, it's, you know, like when um, with rain, when a, 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 it begins to rain, when there's too much humidity in the atmosphere, when the cloud has held as much water as it can, you know, um, there's too much, it can't be hidden anymore. There's something about to bust. There's something about to burst. And for those of you who have healed yourself of these abusive betrayal cycles with these beings, um, whatever it is that's about to bust if this is your story is not going to hurt you. It's going to vindicate you, you know, but for them, not so much. So let's get into it. And it really does feel like um, it's the, it's like the lead up from the, the full moon in Pisces to the full moon in Aries, um, which is like it is in and of itself. The energy is a bridge into the new, right? Because Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac, and Aries is the first sign of the zodiac, and yet because it's full moon energy, it's like um, it, it's like ripe with completion. And the thing about the full moon in Pisces, my guides had me go back to um, the reading I did on my other channel, the the tarot astrology reading for the full moon in Pisces, to kind of remind myself of what was going on at the time. And um, I didn't. I watched a few minutes of it, but the point is that. Um, that moon was so fucking emotional. And yes, Piscean energy, water, of course, is emotional, right? But there was something about that moon that was so, there were so many illusions and distortions that were occurring due to the over, um, due to too much emotional energy circulating and the retrograde energies and the manipulation of all of that. There was a lot and it feels almost like, um, like a tsunami of that coming in now. I don't know how else to explain it, but... Um, where shall we begin? I don't know. I feel like I want to go into my oracle of shadows and light and possibly monology deck and karmic deck. There's a lot of, and, and part of this emotional gaslighting and manipulation and the rewriting of history is, again, this, it's an attempt to get back into your energy, 
it's an attempt to get back and that's too many cards it's an attempt to like get back into your good graces but the way this person this being this group is trying to do it is not by by doing it the right way it's not by um taking accountability for how for whatever it is that they've done it's still an energy of trying to blind you which only shows me that they still um, they still haven't healed and they still haven't taken any form of accountability for for what it is they've done which means that they're just setting you up to do it again is really what it comes down to because um, there's just no um, there's just no it's not that there's no forgiveness you can forgive people without having to ever see them again but there's no there's no restoration without um, recognition when you've hurt somebody. Like that's a key sign that someone is an abuser is if they abuse you and they just never take a th they just never take responsibility and recognize that they've hurt you and apologize for that and then you know do what it takes to actually change the behavior and actively work towards living in a way that is restorative and um it's like these these beings don't feel like and it's really it's really shit because what it comes down to is that they don't think you're worth that and it's nothing to do with you or your value it's it's always a reflection of their own relationship with self you know that's how they ultimately treat themselves and their own inner child etc etc um you're just a um, a mirror to show them how they are with self Even the cards are like uh, confusing and like, finally. Yep, the three fates, what comes around, absolutely. What comes around. This card speaks about something that has already happened on two occasions that is about to happen again, or something that has happened for, th uh, for the third and the last time. It's either already happened or it's about to happen. And when um, the third attempt occurs, it's over. The energy and the cycle is closed okay and most of the time with this energy the three fates it's shady okay um, this is about the some kind of hiding concerning a divine contract with the two and the six the two is the high priestess energy as I say that zero zero four four on my clock the two is the high priestess energy the six is the lovers you put them together that's an eight that's the strength card someone is trying very hard to keep something under wraps and it has to do with your moving forward in a divine contract and bear in mind a divine contract isn't always romantic sometimes it's to do with work sometimes it's to do with a higher level of uh, of accessing your gifts sometimes it's to do with work partnership sometimes it's to do with friendship soulmate relationships there's something um, that you are accessing and it's becoming more and more um, you're getting closer and closer to it as you continue to um, to clear yourself of these learned helplessness energies that had you depending on these beings. And when I say depending, it can be in any way. You could have been emotionally, mentally, spiritually, or physically, financially dependent upon them. But either way, no matter how you were dependent upon them, they were manipulating you into that state to get you um, to to be able to control you because that's always what abuse is about it's always about being able to control the victim control their narrative and they do it for a myriad of ways for one thing um on the one hand especially with beings like you guys if this is your story the reason they like to do that is because they like to feel like some of them know who you are and they love that feeling of knowing that they are have been able to cage the divine being, that they've been able to control the divine being, that they've been able to master your destiny instead of you. They love that. And on the other hand, there is also this energy of beings who don't like to see you rise because it's like they have to stay above or ahead of you. There's a whole bunch of fucked up reasons, and it's all woundedness, why beings abuse and try to control other people's realities okay but this is this 
particular situation, it's like sinister because it feels like this person, um, group, um, whoever this is, they've done something on, on a few occasions. For some of you, it's more than three times. And um, as they've lost their grip on you over time, it's like for some of them, they really do believe like... Um, they really do believe that you don't fully have it in you to be free of them. That's that's their uh, way of thinking. So no matter how much you've healed and you've risen above the energies that they've created in order to box you in a narrative that kept you believing you were powerless, no matter how much you've risen above that, they somehow think that your devotion or your loyalty to them and therefore what they think about you is always going to be greater than your devotion and loyalty to self. This is the thing about abusers and especially narcissistic abuse is that they always will try to play God over you and get you to abdicate your own throne. And you probably have in the past. Maybe this is uh, this uh, the three fates is about you having done this on two or three other occasions, and this energy coming back around to see what are you going to do this time? Are you going to actually walk away, walk away and break this pattern and break this cycle? And this could be with a person, or this could be a behavior. It doesn't really matter. Or are you going to uh, fall again into this place of um, it's misplaced sentiment because this is what they're playing on. The emotional gaslighting is to get you to connect with the sentiment, the good times in order to get you to, um, to latch on to that again because these beings know like that you have um, a big heart they know that you're forgiving. They know that you're empathic. They know that you don't ultimately want to be in conflict. And they play on that. Instead of actually doing the work to win your trust and to win the right to be in your life, because they should win the right to be in your life, right? They want to um, try to emotionally manipulate you by, by utilizing your big heart. This is again is an energy of someone trying to, it's like pulling at your heartstrings. It's it's re it's it's getting their claws back into your energy, but into your heart. They're using the, the, the door of sentiment to try and get in. Dress of alchemy, release your power. So 33. Okay. So this could be some kind of um again beings who are doing this because uh, they have to maintain their control over you because of their affiliations with certain orders. That could be it um, for some of you. For another uh, part, of another message I'm getting is that they really do believe that you will relinquish your power to be with them or to stay with them or um, to appease the situation, right? Um, Another message is like the 33 is to do with Ascended Master energy. So for some of you, you have entered, um, you've entered a level of power where there is no going back. And, um, and they're not aware of that. Even with this dress of alchemy energy, what I'm getting is that all of their um, attempts to, to control, to manipulate, to, um, to gaslight, uh, you alchemize it like this and you alchemize it like this because you're quick to see the strategy and you're quick to also know your own worth is what it comes down to. Um, but this is a very interesting energy because on the one hand, uh, there is this like almost, uh, this, how do I explain this? It's like, um, it's like the, this person or these beings are purposely lying to themselves. Okay, so on the one hand, they really do, they, what it is is that they want to believe that you will relinquish your power, but there's also a part of them that is seeing you in a way they've never seen you before. And, um, and as such, it's like, they're, it, it is like they're trying to get on your side also or get into your good graces. Um, it's almost like these beings just don't know how to navigate in ways that aren't 
manipulative and then for some of you it is like it's fully like um being like that because they they have um they have uh their loyalty is to some other group and even for some of them you know who have like loyal to loyalty to this other group it's still that they, it's almost like they're in too deep with this group too and um they're doing it out of duty I don't know. There's this there's this energy I'm picking up on that is it's like um, this person is trying their best to believe a lie because um, because to believe the truth would mean I don't know what it would mean for them. You know, it's deeper than just being wrong. It's deeper than just being wrong. Um, it's like they desperately need to believe this lie until they can't anymore and maybe that's what the tower energy is about that i'm picking up for this week something's about to bust something's about to burst forth and i've been feeling this um for the past couple of weeks that a lot of the stuff that we've been intuiting in the tarot community um that hasn't materialized in real time or the things on a personal level you've been intuiting and you know in your in your soul that these these things are happening but you haven't had the material proof yet i feel like there is an energy of exposure that's about to break forth i do and i feel like there's a lot trying to fight against it like even um with mercury when it's stationed to go direct it was at eight degrees and right now it's at eight degrees and that eight energy is an energy of like pushing something through by force um and it works on both sides like as you move into your power you are forcing these things to be exposed but it's also like as you move into your power these beings are applying more force to try to um for these things not to be exposed it's a very interesting push push pull. Pharisees preaching what they can't or don't practice. It didn't come out the Yeah, that's interesting. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the dress of alchemy card and um some of you have access um it's not only mass ascended mastery you have um some of your you your angelic dna has come online and there's no there's no going back for some of you um you've got some profound light codes that have come through that have lit you up lit your crown up especially um I'm just very intrigued by the fact that she has a, uh, it's like a three-headed bird in her, in her jar, but she's caught, she's caught it, you know, like whatever it is that they were um, using against you is now, it's now yours, you've caught it, you've, whatever it was that was the, the energy that they were using to trap you, you now have it, you, you now are wielding it for your own, um, you're in glory, really, is what it is. As I lifted that up, I see this card. It's time to be brave. It's time to be brave. And I feel like, again, when I read energy, I read for both sides. So on the one hand, for some of you, it's time to be brave in the sense that it's time for you to completely let go of something and to 0055 on my clock as I say that and to fully trust um I don't know if you can see it there. You could just about see it. It flashed. When it flashes off, you'll see it again. Oh, there we go. And lightning again. Um, <sighs> reset and change. Um, that's the 0055 energy. Change always comes with the storm energy. That's what brings the change. That's why people don't like the 5-5 five, five energy. Um, for some of you with this, it's time to be brave. It's time for you to be brave in the sense that it's time for you to trust yourself and what it is that you've been picking up from this experience and situation, even if you haven't yet fully seen the material evidence, okay? But 
at the same time, we do have a clear solution. Something is coming through. This is kind of like Ace of Swords energy, okay? Now, on the other hand, the it's time to be brave is all about... Uh, you know these other beings it's time for them to to face to face the music Twelfth house absolutely Twelfth house the house of hidden enemies Miracles and the inexplicable, prisons and enclosed environments, including jails and hospitals and asylums, karma and past lives, spirituality and the paranormal, dreams and astral, imagination, closure, closure, closure. But this is the karmic chronicles, this is speaking about what you're dealing with, so evidently someone is trying to keep you in a karmic um, cycle in a jail out of your ability to tap into the miraculous and we have been talking about this Piscean energy from the full moon in Pisces and here it is showing up with this 12th house energy um, it's interesting because I was picking up on this um, earlier on today and it's come out infirmity spirits so um, we are in Virgo season, we're in the final deacon, and the sun is moving into Libra in a, in a little less than a week, next Saturday, I believe. And um, in terms of the spell work that beings tend to, to use against others um, during Virgo season, it tends to be um, magnified. The Virgo energy they like to use is the sixth house energy. Of course, Virgo is Pisces' sister sign, right? So they like to attack your routine your health, your fitness, your money. Um, those are all things that um, the sixth house spells can can attack. I'm gonna take this out of the infirmity spirits and I'm put it out here. Um, I feel like though the, the way that this is occurring is like it's someone is someone trying to do it through dream work with this Piscean energy. Um, and for some of you, the infirmity spirits, it's again, and this would be, you know, this would be a message if you're already aware of this energy and it's already played out in your life and you already know. This is the energy of with this, uh, the three fates, what comes around. Can pick it up um, what comes around this is the energy of somebody who has uh, who's done this to you before so this is like um, this is like um, this is like something that someone has done consistently to you and they're still they're still trying to do they're still trying to do it and when I say trying to do it that's really what I, I mean you know like trying because they're not, they're not going to be successful um, because you're closing out this cycle. So um, if you've had issues over the weekend, especially with uh, certain symptoms returning that you know are emblematic of this work, that um, and you've had it before in the past, um, for some of you, this is also the energy of these beings who like to transfer their sickness onto you, not just make you sick to slow you down. For some of you, that's it. But for some of you, this is the energy transference of uh, when they try to to send the sickness that is in their own bodies onto you and into you so that you then um, alchemize it on their behalf. You've done it before. You may not have even been aware of it at the time, but if this message is for you, you, you know that that has been a part of your reality. Um, this person has been trying to do that again. Okay, so they've been trying to swap. It's like a karma swap. Um, that like because a lot of the time not a lot of the time mm, that's a little bit controversial let me not go there tonight i'm not going to go there but um it's it's an energy transference it's a karma swap that can be um achieved through high level witchcraft and a lot of the time they seek out beings from um remote places to do this work for them And they will seem to seemingly recover from something. 
and uh, and then you you don't feel so well and it may it may not manifest as the, as the actual illness they've had um, and sometimes it does with the same symptoms and everything but um, anyway spirits of poverty it was at the bottom of the deck before it's come out now we've already spoken about that um, in terms of the Virgo energy and the um, material thievery, the, the, the messing with money. Um, the spirits of poverty is also uh, trying to bring lack, the energy of lack into everything you do. So when you think about lack, I'm talking about not only in your material reality, but before that can occur in your material reality, it must also occur on the mental plane. So it's about making you think low about yourself and doubt yourself is really what it comes down to um and yeah at the bottom of the deck we do have the ninth house so this is uh to do with the sagittarian energy and the jupiter energy that's all about the expansion of your own mental consciousness that gives you the ability to um walk in faith and to um live your truth and to explore the uh and to move past the limitations and the boundaries that you have been placed in prior to your ability to connect to these expansive energies and walk in truth. Um, it's where you also uh, you connect to your higher self and the Sagittarius energy is what connects us to the 144 frequency. It's how it's expressed in, this, in and through the zodiac. Okay, so um, that in and of itself is speaking about, uh, for, for those of you who know that you're dealing with beings who know who you are and have been trying to bind you for that reason, what they've been trying to do of late is stop, um, stop your angelic DNA from activating. For those of you who are receiving angelic DNA upgrades, okay? Um, I don't think that has occurred. I think that... Um, I think that uh, you received those activations because it was coming through before with the Dress of Alchemy. Um, the 1212 portal might be of real significance to you. I want to show you once again at 103 in the morning, this 3-3 energy that's coming through. So on the 12th house at the top, I have 3-3 because the 12th house is Pisces energy and the portal that connects with that is the 3-3 portal in March. And at the top here, I have um, the 12-12 portal because that connects to the 9th house of Sagittarius. It occurs um, on the 12th of December. It occurs during um, Sagittarius season or the 9th house of the collective zodiac. Okay, so I say that because we have again the 3-3 and then you break down 12-12. 3 3. A lot of 3 3 energy, okay? Um, beings who really thought that they ran you and they ran your life are about to, um, everything's about to blow up in their faces um, for some of them, okay? Um, and for, for some of them, what it is is also, um, it's like they're going to come undone. This is, like I keep on saying, it's it's a heavy emotional energy. This is the energy of something about to, like to, it can't, the cloud can't hold water anymore. Um, it's like an emotional outpouring. For some of you, they might be coming and, and, and confessing. That might be one thing. Um, for some of you, the pressure might be too much. They might be coming to confess. They might be coming to apologize. Um, other beings who are aware of this, if this is not um, them directly in the order, but they know what's been happening, they might come and confess. You know, there is an energy of something emotionally being too much, okay? Um, to the side. Where shall we go now? Tarot. I'm going to close it out with the tarot. There's also this energy, the Pisces energy is the third water sign of the zodiac, right? It's the most evolved of the water signs and it's actually the most evolved sign on the zodiac wheel for the simple fact that the Pisces energy comes at the end when we've been through all the other energies. And um, 
it returns us back to our divine state. It returns us back to innocence. That's what the Pisces energy ultimately is also here to help us do, right? Um, and that's even what the age of Pisces is, it has been helping us to do in its higher octaves. Um, there's also something about the Piscean energy there. It's all about reaching your own... Um, it's reaching like your highest ascended levels of emotional intelligence. And what I mean by that is that um, the matrix dumbs us down emotionally and it teaches us or it taught us that um, if we felt too much, we were too something. Um, when really that was always, if you're an empathic being, that is your power. And in truth be told, they knew this about you, which is why they wanted you in lower states so they could manifest and magnify their fear frequencies through you because your emotions are so big that it takes an energy and it makes it bigger, right? So really your, your, your ability to wield your emotional energy for your own purpose is part of your wealth. Um, it's what runs your chariot and your light body. It's what connects you to your divine resources. And there's something about the full moon in Pisces that connected that. But there's something also about what's happening right now with this energy that is assisting this. And that's the way energy goes. Where you are excelling, the ones that were trying to fuck with you emotionally are going in the opposite direction. It's almost like they're becoming more emotionally stupid. You know, and this is why, like, I'm picking up on this energy of, like, they're feeling these things, like, maybe even feeling like what they're doing is wrong, but they don't know how to handle themselves because they don't know how to handle their emotions. Um, I don't know. I hope it makes sense. Uh, we do have the Ace of Coins just flew out. I'm not taking it because I do these cards differently. I'm going to actually um, draw three cards with the deck face down whatever it is I'm drawn to at the bottom. There is some kind of resolution, justice coming. The King of Swords was at the bottom of the deck and the Ace of Pentacles threw, uh, flew out. Something is occurring in real time, okay? Um, with the Ace of Pentacles overarching theme, challenge, best way to navigate. I don't know what they are yet. They're still face down. At the bottom of the deck, we have the Hermit, Virgo energy. This is all about liberation. Um, we are wrapping up Virgo season. We are, you know, um, a few days out of the new moon, a week um, out of the 9-9 portal. We are moving swiftly into a higher state of self-liberation. Um, that's really what it is. Wherever it is that, whatever light you have recovered of yours, especially um, through Cancer and Leo season is what has led you through these portals. And to whatever extent you allowed that true light to lead you is the um, level of self-liberation you're about to experience for the next cycle. Overarching theme, the King of Swords still did come out as the overarching theme. It was at the bottom of the deck when the Ace of Pentacles came out. This is the mastery of mind. This is also some kind of justice. This is um, the ending of something also with the King of Swords. Okay, this is an active energy. Something is actually um, like moving forward. Okay, um, it's like a grand cutting that's occurring. The challenge is the star. The challenge is the star. This is interesting. Oh, okay, well, that's it. The challenge is that you have um, 0110 binary creator code. The challenge is that you have returned home to self, or the challenge is not with uh, the star, that would be more the sun, but the star is a uh, divine alignment. The challenge is you've risen too high. The challenge is you're shining too bright. The challenge is 111 now. <laughs> the challenge is um, you have ascended into your, your um, you've ascended out of your prison and, and higher into your position in this new age. Um, the challenge is that other beings are seeing that about you too. The challenge is that you your light is on. The challenge is that they cannot put out 
the light anymore. Um, the challenges you've become too strong, the challenges that you've connected too deeply with your heart. Um, so much green energy here and the crystal here, of course, is Moldavite. Um, the challenges you've ascended too hard. <laughs> you've ascended too hard, um, too far, too hard. Um, uh, you, you, you've, you've, you've gone way past what it is, um, where it is they're able to, to, to come and get you again. On an energetic level where you are they can't they can't reach you anymore to pull you back um, on a frequency level mm. the challenge is also that you um, you are learning how to wield the power of your emotional energy and your but you're also learning how to how to wield the power of your king of sword you're learning how to not give a fuck no matter how much a person or a being tries to tag at your your heartstrings, you're learning how to um, how to overcome that within. You're learning how to choose yourself. You're learning how to choose your journey. You're learning how to choose your own destiny and your own path. You're learning how to be happy alone with the hermit. And then, as I lifted up, we've got the Queen of Cups. You're learning how to um, be very happy and satisfied in your own company, you know, and for some of you, uh, this might have been a romantic situation too. And uh, this being really thought that you would never walk away from them or I don't know, you know, it could have been a divine partner or um, not a divine partner per se, but um, someone who you thought was a divine partner or, um, you know, a twin flame. It could have been any of that, but... Um, you broke out of these narratives that a being or other beings have used for so long to, to keep you in a state of powerlessness, a learned helplessness, where you, were reliable, where you were reliant upon them. And even if you weren't reliant upon them, um, you felt like you had to be reliant upon others, like you weren't self-sufficient. You've reached a level of self-sufficiency um, with the hermit. Ooh, best way to navigate these energies, strength. Strength. So we got Leo and Aquarius energy here. That says a lot, right? Because um, the star is the 17 card and strength is the eight. So that's eight, eight energy. Okay. Um, plus we've got the Leo, we've got golden age energies on the board. We've got the age of Aquarius, which is a new golden age and the, and Leo, which was the previous golden age. So, um, this is telling me that uh, the best way for you to navigate these energies is to continue to push forward in your conviction courageously and to push forward with the recovery of light codes that you have. The light codes that many of you are bringing forth are also um, wisdom from the previous golden age that it's time for it to be seeded into the new earth grids. Um, so continue to move forward with that. You're unstoppable. You're unfuckwithable at this point, if this is your reading. You, they can't get to where you are energetically. They can't get to where you are. It's not stopping them from trying, but the truth is they can't get to where you are. Continue to do your clearing work because it's still, you can still feel it, you know? Um, you can feel those energies trying to weigh you down. Um, another important thing to do when you're dealing with heavy emotional energy is to move your body because um, a lot of the time when you're carrying other people's emotions, and uh, a lot of you, if you do any kind of energy work, you'll know this to be the case. A lot of the time when you do um, energy work or when you're carrying a lot of people's emotions, you will retain a lot of water. You will, st you will start to have like water retention. And in that sense, it's very important to drink a lot of water. It's important to take your salt baths and to clear your energy. And it's also really important to, to sweat, to work out and to, and to do some cardio, get the energy moving and get yourself sweating and clear your fields of those energies, yeah? I'm going to get one more card for you. I'm going to the Sacred Traveler deck. I just uh, brought this deck out the other day again. Um, let's 
see what messages Spirit has for you before we leave. Wondrous universe, walk in beauty. Walk in beauty. Connect with your highest timelines and beauty and recognize and realize that you are now um, in, a, in a place where you are able to create beauty wherever you go. And you create beauty wherever you go by finding it. Whatever you pay attention to is what you grow. So if you are paying attention to all the beauty that surrounds you as opposed to finding the flaws, that's how life becomes beautiful. The more you're able to identify the beauty and the value in things, the more you increase in beauty and in value. Okay. Um, crossing bridges. Yeah. Crossing bridges. It's time to go to the other side. It's time to move out of a cycle. It's time for healing, connecting, mending, and releasing. Yeah. This is all to do with... Um, you know, like a bridge over troubled waters. It's time for you to leave the troubled waters behind. It's time for some of you to, to truly heal. And when I say truly heal, I'm not, I'm not in any way taking away from all the work you've already done. But what I am saying is that um, it can be very difficult to heal certain wounds when still stuck in cycles or with certain beings. You know, um, some of you have been going through stuff alone for so long that you think that um, you'll never love or that you don't even want to love. But here's the truth. In order to heal certain wounds of rejection and abandonment, you're, you're going to need um, someone to mirror that back to you. You know, mirror, mirror it back to you in an intimate relationship. Um, and that's not to say you need to be with someone else, but you can benefit and you can heal even more and in a different way through that um, connection. So for some of you, it's time to heal in a different way, okay? Um, for some of you also, this, uh, this full moon in Aries is... Um, is clearing out of your fields things that have stopped you from aligning with your divine contracts, okay? Sorry. The full moon in Aries is, um, is helping, it's not even helping to clear it. Well, yeah, it is because it's a full moon, but it, there's something about... Um, this Libra season and going into eclipse season that these energies are, are bringing in the grand shifts that are necessary to um, activate into a fuller state um, divine contracts for some of you, okay? Ooh, okay, so I didn't go into all the energies that came out here. It was Virgo energy with the Hermit. It's Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra energy with the King of Swords. Aquarius and Leo energy, we got into those. And the... Um, the um, crystals are blue chalcedony for the hermit, black spinel, never heard of that one before, S-P-I-N-E-L, moldavite with the star and carnelian connecting with your passion and your creativity, carnelian. So that's what I have for you guys. I hope that this reading and these, uh, this discussion was helpful for you and insightful. Um, I hope it, it assists you in leaving here feeling more um, empowered and affirmed in what it is that you're feeling, especially if you've been in this state of, of, of feeling a little bit lost and confused in these energies. You're not alone. <laughs> you're definitely not alone in that area. Um, what else? If you would like to work with me or know more about my services, please check out my website, solarawithnh.info. Um, my website address will be in the description box below. If you would like to donate to the channel, you can also do that through um, connecting with my PayPal information below. But I think that's all I have for you in terms of even announcements tonight. I'm going to, to get going, but before I do, I, um, I wish you love, joy, peace, beauty, wonder, stability, um, 
focus, clarity, every joy, lots of joy. In case I didn't say that, I may have already said that. I don't know. I like to say joy a lot because that's how important it is. Every beautiful thing under the sun that is ultimately your birthright and comes to you when you are walking in the fullness of your truth and you've reconnected with um, who you truly are and you're walking in that. Okay, when you are in divine alignment. So I will see you guys again when I see you. Until next time, be well.